We are privileged to have our district governor this year, this week with us, uh, Lion Ken Joe from the Woodville Club. And so, if everybody would would stand and welcome him. Good afternoon. Thank you all for having me today. I need to ask a quick question. How many by show of hands Baptists are in the room? <laughs> okay, back half Methodist. <laughs> Split. Okay, well, I just, it's like empty up front, and it's like, you know, reminds me of Baptist Church. So, <laughs> took me a minute to, that kind of went over some heads initially, didn't it? Most of the hands raised on the Baptist question were, though, in the back four tables. I'm just going to tell you all that before <laughs> I do appreciate y'all having me here today. A uh, couple things I want to update you on, and, and I guess I want to, uh, for lack of a better term, plead about. Um, there's there's several, um, right word, can't think of it, um, avenues that, that Lions support. Um, and I really talk about three specific things, and it's ones y'all all, all heard about, I'm sure. Um, I talk about the camp. I talk about LCIF, and I talk about TLF, um, and, I've, and I've been doing a, a little bigger speech about the camp uh, by show of hands, and I'm not going to include Daniel and Amy, line Daniel and line Amy on this one, but how many people know what's going on at the camp, like literally right now? <laughs> okay. Um, COVID has made a bad year for everybody. It made a bad year for clubs. It's made a bad year for the districts, and lineism is a, is a general rule. Uh, it actually has turned out not to be quite so bad for the camp. And you're thinking, how can that be? Last year, camp was canceled altogether. This year, it's very, very <coughs> modified. It's being done for families. So if you have a family or a, a child that y'all sponsored in the past, this year is an opportunity for that child plus their entire family to go to camp. It's, it's, it's camp for families, but they're calling it. Um, it's very limited. Uh, if y'all have <laughs> been to the camp in the past, a dorm has three wings, 24 beds per wing. They're putting a family in a wing and they're isolated by themselves, but they do all three wings. So the dorms that are there, you can get about 12 families there. And we're still, uh, for lack of a better term, entertaining a group of 50 or 60 or 70 people based on the size of the families. Um, but it's better than being closed, which last year we were closed. And there's another reason this hasn't been just a bad thing. Uh, if you weren't aware, the camp had some major damage done during two surface storms last year. Straight line winds pulled the entire roof off of one dorm. Okay, Buckhouse 2, the roof was gone. And I think Buckhouse 1, the roof was severely damaged and unusable. So we were going to be limited, even if there wouldn't have been COVID, we had two dorms closed, which is about 150 kids worth of beds that weren't going to be open. But this made the executive committee do something that's kind of been in the plans for three or four years called the master plan. Uh, the, the, the youngest bunk house out there was built in the mid fifties. The first ones were in the early, the late forties, early fifties. So they're all old, they're center block, they're, uh, they're aged, plain and simple, they're very old. So it was like, okay, we got two that are no longer usable, <coughs> camp is closed or modified for this year. What can we do? What, what, uh, what can the executive committee do and start now uh, to take advantage of, of this ultimately bad thing, but take advantage of these times? So back in November or October at our, one of our uh, council governor's meetings, uh, the, the board of the camp met, and there's 93 members or so of the board. And for this vote, we had to have two-thirds vote yes, not two-thirds be present and vote, two-thirds vote yes. And the board elected or voted to approve $9 million, which is not borrowed money, it's all camp money. Uh, everything is paid for by cash there. If you didn't know that, they don't borrow money. Um, an expansion of two new bunkhouses and a area called Eagle Trail, which is gonna have tiny homes. And believe it or not, because of the modified camp, we're able to start construction it literally started, we did groundbreaking in February at the council of government meeting there, and they're putting in Eagle Pass and building two new bunkhouses to be fully operational and open in 2022. Y'all, that's huge. I'm just gonna tell y'all, that's, uh, that's big. The ultimate goal is eight new bunkhouses, 
But, you know, again, a $9 million price tag for two bunkhouses and eight tiny homes, um, it'll be phased, uh, but the goal still is to not take a loan, to be able to pay cash for what, what we're doing out there. Uh, I currently sit on the executive committee as a governor's rep from our council, and I was on it also as a director's <coughs> rep uh, a couple of years ago, so I've been involved in this, really skip one year, but been involved with it since the beginning. So uh, it's a really exciting time for the camp even though we can't have camp in the normal way, it's a really exciting, growing time for Texas Lions camp. Uh, and that said, any support give, given is a great thing. Uh, Y'all are 200% club, I do believe, for Texas Lions camp, and we appreciate that more than you can imagine. So thank you very much. That's the longest part of my speech right there, so we're halfway through, not really. So LCIF. Um, LCIF is the, the big foundation that gives money to um, everybody, literally, all over the world. And if you don't know this, and, and I had known this, but I kind of got reiterated this past week at our state meeting, this district receives more money, or has received more money, than any other district in the state of Texas from LCIF. And we're talking about the Alaska tornadoes, we're talking about hurricanes, Rita, Ike, all the above. Okay, we've received the most money, this district. And this district, if you don't know, is long and kind of narrow. It kind of goes from here to Louisiana and from the coast up to Garrison-ish. Kind of take that whole southeast Texas and, and deep east Texas portion. Um, we were also the lowest in giving on LCIF for the state of Texas. When you're the largest benefactor and the lowest in giving, that makes it for people like me in this jacket and him next year in his jacket. It's like you want to look down at the table. So any, uh, I guess think y'all are also 200% club for that as well. Uh, don't forget there is the Century Clubs and things like that. Uh, and I'm sure some of you do that. TLF on a smaller scale is Texas Lions Foundation. Um, y'all y'all 200% across the board. Let me just come out and say that right now, I do believe. And maybe more than that on some. Um, did y'all do 300%? I think percent? there's 200 okay. give stuff. Right, way. right. But 200% across the board, I don't know many clubs that do that. I know several that are 100% close, but y'all are 200% across the board, which is very, very, uh, I'm very thankful for that. But TLF gives a little $2,000 grants. I know they gave one for on Alaska, uh, the tornadoes. So that's another one that's very local to Texas. It's not as hard to get. Um, very, it's a more limited amount of money. It's $2,000 typical and they write a check. So uh, we appreciate y'all support for that too. Um, the other topic I talked about is and this is the going thing. If you've talked to anybody in the last year, come and spoke to you, they talk to you about membership. Um, I, me and Daniel's talked a lot about our two clubs, Woodwool, we're right next to each other basically in Livingston. And we've talked a lot about membership and things to try to increase membership here in the East Texas region. Um, talked about it some with, um, at the council meeting, excuse me, the uh, convention last weekend. There was a lot of discussion about membership. And one of the things, I will tell you what Woodville's doing um, that could work for y'all here because y'all are, and this is only because you're a noon club, because we're a noon club as well, we meet every Thursday, um, is we have a group of people who have shown interest in Lions or they've joined Lions, they can't come to a new meeting, like period, can't come to a new meeting. So there's a couple of options you can do to help them become Lions or support them uh, in Lionism. First one is you do what's called an I call it an extension club, but a branch club, and that is it's a group of people who would be members here, but they meet separate. Their due structure is typically different because if they don't feed every day at this location, say they meet somewhere else, you may not they may not pay full dues for the meal to be included because y'all's dues include your meals just like ours does. But if they rotate bringing food, there's might be just the basic dues plus ten dollars to go into a into an account. Other option, that, and we're actually voting on this in May. We had, we talked about it with our whole club, everybody at a meeting, not just the board. And the board's voting next month to move one meeting a month to the evening to give those people who can't come to the meetings during the day have a meeting to come to, get around other lines, be around. Uh, long-term lines, not just new ones. Uh, and, if, and if everything went really good with that group, could they become their own lines club? They can. 
Uh, if you're a branch club, typically it's five to 20. Once you're at 20, you should make your own club. This by no means, and I'll stress this when I talk to our club about this, this by no means is trying to take away from the new club. It's for those people. We have four or five educators. Teachers can't leave. Principals can. Most teachers can't leave during the day. So you, you have a, a place for them to go and become lines. And, and although we might lose one or two, and I stress this in the board meeting, it's not about us losing members, it's about lineism gaining members. So look at the grand scheme of things. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna bring up, and we were talking about it here at the table, how many of y'all know who the high rollers are? Samson high rollers. Okay, that's good. May 1st, what y'all doing? Cold Springs. You coming? I don't know. That's too far away from here. Here's, here's the thing. High Rollers is a club that we have been, they are extremely supportive of Lions. And I don't mean a little. They, they give them the camp to the tune of about $355,000. Okay? Two years ago, after they had a rally here in Midway, or Indian Springs, I think, but they had a rally that, plus the other rallies they do, they came and presented a check in the summer of 19 for $54,000 to Texas Lions Camp. They are extreme supportive Lions and Lions Camp. And I got a call from their current president, the professor, and I don't know his real name, don't have a clue. They all have nicknames, right? So I got a call from their professor, and he said, we want to invite you and the Lions to come to our rally on May 1st at Shivers Ice House in Cold Spring, Texas, and I said, we will be there, okay? Number one, as supportive they are as lines before they ever knew who we were, we need to support them. This, now you're gonna hear some of Ken's opinion here, but we need to support them. But one thing that we can do for them is, like, y'all don't know this, I'm the knife guy. How many of y'all own a camp knife? Really, just one in the whole room? Really? <laughs> We can take care of that. Okay. I got knives with me. I'll sell them. You know, I'm going to talk about the knives in just a minute. So, you got 15 of them? There's, 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 I can tell y'all, y'all's, y'all's club is probably the second most knives sold to a club in general in the state of Texas, just so you know. So, that's what I'm saying. Only two people raising their hands is like, somebody's got a board at home or something. So, anyway, so. We, when we sold, when we went to their, their rally in, in Midway, in the spring, I sold about $2,000 worth of knives. Well, $2,000 worth of knives is $800 for the camp. It's $40 an hour that goes to the camp. We, the, my club or the district makes no money off those knives. $57 pays for the knife, $43 goes to the camp. If I have to ship them, $3 pays for shipping. So um, that's... That's the knife project. It's given about twenty thousand dollars to the camp so far since we started that project. They they do I think three rallies a year. Now last year they didn't because of COVID, and then there's other reasons last year that they didn't, um, but mainly COVID. So really they still gave like a thirty thousand dollar check to the camp last year. They drove to the camp and just made the presentation with no kids there. They typically go what they call VIP weekend, which is when new directors and, and new uh, governors are going to get trained on the camp. They'll come that weekend and they'll, they'll ride 100 people on Harleys to Kerrville, Texas. They'll spend the night and that whole group presents a check uh, again to the camp. So support any, uh, anything you can do as a club or individuals to support them. What they do is great stuff. And it's not just for Lions Camp. They do some other things too, but they, the, the main benefactor is Texas Lions Camp. Um, I'm sometimes better at answering questions, but typically y'all don't ask those questions. Daniel, blind Daniel, anything, anything about from this weekend that's big that I'd update them on? You've heard my normal spiel now. Um, I get so used to it, it just goes in one ear now. I know. <laughs> Thank you, it's my weekend that I, I put on this weekend. Um, just so you'll know me, I'm with my normal job is emergency manager for Tyler County, also JP, uh, first term JP for Tyler County. Uh, appreciate y'all having me today. <laughs> Thank y'all. I do have knives, but more importantly, I have, because we haven't been able to meet or, or meet much, I have my pins. I, I brought some with me. 
I have a council pin, which is for all the district governors in Texas, which is 16. We have a, a kind of a cumulative pin for our council, and then I have my individual pin, um, and both are five bucks, not each, but you get both pins for five dollars, and that does not go to me, it just reimburses the district for paying for those pins. So I will have those out here um, when, when we end, so stop by. Um, if you have a, if you're going to buy some, I don't have any change, so you know I'll take a twenty. But just saying, <laughs> if I gave people with fives to come first, I would then have change for those with tens and twenties. But mention your politician. First term. Yeah, yeah, no, probably only term now, right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, this gentleman just asked a question. Um, did we have any pipes bust at the camp? We did have some pipes bust, but I don't think we had any major structural damage to cause uh, more delay. Does that make sense? We are getting, as part of that big project, new underground lines with ways to isolate individual buildings, which they can't do now. If they bust a line now, they shut down the whole camp's water. So part of that is also doing some infrastructure, you know, underground infrastructure during the process. So, good question. Any other questions? If I don't know the answer, I'll wing it. Well, thank you all for having me today.